uh, Aaron and Jack, this is the thing that Aaron had said to try and do different. Got the battery charger, we're set up for absorbed glass mat gel cell, which is what we are. We're at 12.9 volts and we're at 100% battery, so we're fully charged. All right, now I'm going to remove the charger from the uh, equation. All right, now what I did was I took the alternator, connected it to the drive motor. This is the output from the alternator. It goes straight to the compressor motor. This switch controls the battery. When the switch is in this position, it gets, if you can get a shot right here, this will energize straight here, this. All right, so it takes the battery out of the equation. So Aaron, to answer your question, will it run without the bat cap? This will answer that question, because we'll start with the bat cap, which is also connected to the Optima, all right? So this is a deep cycle gel cell battery. This is a super duper high dog, bestest battery in the universe battery you can get. Bat cap is the Furman capacitor. This will provide the voltage, and what will happen is I'll start it, then I'm going to flip the switch. If the alternator can run without the battery, it will run. If it can't, it will stop. All right, so we're going to throw the switch and then we're going to throw it back once it's energized, okay? All right. Oh, wrong position. You ready? That's the off position. Here we go. So it runs with the battery. first question answered. All right, now the second thing is we took the wire off. We're going to start it and you're going to notice it spins a lot faster without that extra wire in there. And then we're going to connect the inverter right here so we'll have our power from our power inverter, that same wire. Then I'm going to plug the battery charger into the inverter and you'll notice the same phenomenon. It will slow way down and it will give you the battery condition. All right, so here we go.
So, same conclusion as before, we're just draining it slower uh, through the uh, setup than without it, but it, it definitely still is draining. That's it. Okay, so the question came, would the little motor run any better than the big one? So we're going to run the little one. Same test. We got our little excite wire that goes from the alternator right to the drive motor here. And it's connected up. It goes through the same switch. So when the switch is on, you have battery. When the switch is off, it's straight from the alternator to the motor. So if the alternator can run the motor, it's going to run the motor. Again, we're at 100%, 13.2 volts, which is 12 volts plus your 10% over, which is correct. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to start the system running, and then we're going to switch over to just the alternator with no battery assist. I'm going to add additional voltage in, current actually. It's going to be the same voltage, but the same current. Now that took, okay. Okay, here's our inverter. Shows us at 120 volts AC. 11.5 volts output. That's at least something. The motor will run on 11.5. We're going to try it. Done. So we can't, we can't run that additional excite wire and have the system maintain. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove our excite wire. So that won't be charging the battery from the alternator. We'll spin her up. And that's the whole thing, start to finish, it performs the same, it's, it's still draining the battery, uh, it'll drain it slower, but it still drains the battery. And it's a little more efficient than just running it, you know, running the load straight from the battery, running it through the alternator, but it's, you know, it's just a more efficient use of the current, it still drains the battery. So, the ba I mean, I think conclusively what we've determined is that the battery is the input source, and not, uh, and it may be mechanically assisted as per, you know, what you'd written up, which is fine, and I agree with that and understand it. But the, the mechanics of the thing alone doesn't run the system. So there you go.